On January 20th, I wrote a response to one of Vladimir Moss's articles. Since I happened to have knowledge of the topic I was addressing, and sent it to some Orthodox and pseudo-Orthodox people and pointed out the flaws and superficial arguments that Vladimir gave. One malevolent layman who belongs to the old calendarist church under Archbishop Gregory of Colorado told me that he would be interested in seeing Vladimir's response. Part of my email response to this layman was as follows. Moss is of bad will. His arguments were so bogus that one could rightly conclude he is equally sloppy and superficial in all his other polemical writings. I have a few more things to say about this layman in a moment. On January 23rd, Vladimir Moss emailed the layman and sent me a carbon copy. In Vladimir's email, he said that the information in my videos and what I write here on YouTube is rubbish. Of course, he gave no examples or proof whatsoever. One of the things he may be referring to is the information I gave in my video about Vladimir Moss. He could not possibly be referring to the information I give about the RTOC and GOC because he knows as well as I do that they are guilty as charged. I'm not saying he would disagree with this, but if he does, I invite Vladimir Moss to a telephone conversation. I can record it using an inline recording device and upload it here on YouTube to let the listeners decide who is telling the truth. Even the layman who I just mentioned, who was under Archbishop Gregory, said that it was wrong that Vladimir Moss bled after I reported to him that the RTOC priest, Father Vladimir Morvinkin of Sacramento, pointed me to a church in the Serbian Patriarchate for the sacraments. The layman said that Moss was not honest enough to level with me by admitting that a priest in his jurisdiction pointed me in the wrong direction. For those of you who are not familiar with this story, see this video. If, in the event, any RTOC clergymen or people contradict the facts I reported in my story, please understand they are liars or ignorant of the details, and I would be willing to discuss this issue with any of them on the telephone and put the conversation here on YouTube and let the listeners judge and see for themselves who is telling the truth. You will clearly see that I have told the truth from the beginning, but they won't discuss it because they are of bad will, guilty as charged and cowardly. The hireling cares not for the sheep because he is an hireling, as Christ said in John 10.13. I was a new sheep in their church at the time Father Vladimir Morvinkin initiated the scandal. Instead of caring for the sheep that was scandalized, they fled because they are hirelings and do not care for the sheep and do not have Christian love, missionary zeal, and pastoral concern. One of the things that bothers me about the tone in Vladimir Moss's carbon copy email is a standoffish and condescending attitude toward me as if I had done something wrong. So I want to go back to the beginning and remind people who precisely is at fault here. A few years ago, Vladimir Moss pointed me to the RTOC under Bishop Stefan, and I contacted one of his priests, Father Vladimir Mordvinkin of Sacramento, to see about going to his church. Father Vladimir in Sacramento pointed me to a parish in the Serbian Patriarchate, and the reason he gave was because they were closer to where I live. This is a reprehensible reason to point a person to a church the RTOC claims is apostate and heretical. I kindly notified Father Vladimir that the parish he directed me to was in the Serbian Patriarchate. Did he thank me for this information? No. Did he apologize for directing me to a church his own church claims is heretical and apostate? No. Instead, he fled and never wrote me again. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. John 10.13 I informed Vladimir Moss that Father Vladimir Mordvinkin had pointed me to a church in the Serbian Patriarchate, and he wrote me back and asked if I was sure Father Vladimir was in the RTOC under Bishop Stefan. I said yes, and eventually sent Vladimir Moss a copy of my email correspondence with Father Vladimir of Sacramento. Did Vladimir Moss thank me for this information? No. Did he assure me that he would check into this? No. Did he apologize to me? No. Did he level with me by admitting that a priest in the RTOC pointed me in the wrong direction? No. Instead, he fled. So I resent the implication in his email that I am at fault for anything. I did the RTOC no wrong. It is not my fault that Father Vladimir Mordvinkin pointed me to a parish his own church claims as heretical and apostate. Vladimir Moss should have thanked me for this information. I also notified Bishop Stefan 
that one of his priests had directed me to a parish in the Serbian Patriarchate, and I received the same treatment from him. Did he thank me for this information? No. Did he assure me he would investigate it? No. Did he apologize to me? No. Instead, he fled and never wrote me again. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. John 10, 13. I notified Archbishop Alexei, the leader of the other RTOC jurisdiction about this, and he said it was wrong that Father Vladimir Mordvinkin pointed me to a parish in the Serbian Patriarchate and that I shouldn't have to be going through this, and he said he would pray for me. With regard to all my videos about the RTOC, I only decided to publicly expose them after there was absolutely no indication of repentance and compassion in them. I notified Bishop Stefan and Father Vladimir Mordvinkin that if I did not receive an explanation from them for why the latter pointed me to a church which, which his own church claims is apostate and heretical, I would make a YouTube video exposing the story. I gave them many, many months to offer some kind of explanation, but they never wrote me. So the RTOC brought this criticism on themselves. They are directly responsible for not only this video, but for all the other videos I have made about them. It was always within their capacity and ability to totally neutralize the scandal, but their pride and lack of prudence and Christian love prevented them from doing so. If I temporarily became critical and judgmental toward them, it was only after they refused to level with me. I had initially gone to them in an amicable way, but as you can see here, I was treated like garbage. After I criticized them for their lack of Christian love, I notified Bishop Stefan and Father Vladimir Mordvinkin that I was willing to start over with them and said I wanted a spiritual father. Neither one of these clergymen appreciated this and did not even respond. Again, the man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. John 10:13. Now, I want to say a few more words about the information in Vladimir Moss's article that I responded to. His arguments were so weak and unscholarly, I think it would be right to conclude that all his other polemical information is equally worthless. In fact, a few years ago, when I was in the old calendarist movement, two laymen told me that there were errors in Vladimir's writings. One of these laymen told me that he had notified Vladimir Moss about this, but that there was no indication from Vladimir that he was going to make any corrections. I do not recommend people read Vladimir Moss's polemical material, and I strongly advise that everyone hearing my voice stay away from the GOC and RTOC groups. You will not reach your full spiritual potential if you follow people like them. Vladimir Moss and the pseudo-clergy in these groups are wolves who will snatch you away from the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church of Christ. Thank you for listening. See the information below in the description box.